What's up and welcome back to another video. Let's start the day off with a little road trip to North Lauderdale. It's bright and early, it's like eight in the morning. Got something in the trunk, we'll show you guys what it is and where we headed. See you guys when we get there. made it and I am now at Dale's shop gear driven this is a new shop I mean he's been here what a year yep this is Dale the owner hey what's going on guys the builder the guy behind building these transmissions I got my transmission here but this thing is hurt look how hurt this is compared to the ones he has I mean mine's been coated all ugly this is just one randomly found on one of his tables look how beautiful that is have to get mine looking like that that was sandblasted and painted Sandblasted and painted. I need that. This one's just sandblasted. Yeah, I use this rock to finish product and I keep some of my supplies on this rock. So this is like the last station before I do packaging. This is my tear down station over here. Where I do all my tear downs and then all the building takes place over there. First two stations. This is my initial station. Right, right. One, two, that's ready to go. That's the third one right So two all-wheel drives. Yeah. And this is uh this is Dale's oh, yeah. Integra. You guys may remember it, right? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, he is porting it out. Yeah, not about two weeks. Yeah, like two weeks. Like people three, are going three, crazy for his parts. Yeah. This thing is stripped. Oh my goodness. What was here? I'll probably I'll insert a picture of what was in here. It was a nice, nice turbo setup. Yeah, 728. Yeah, I did that on a 6266 journal. They made nice power. So someone is taking this beauty home. This is his car. It matches with the shop, which is very, very nice. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below so you guys can check him out on Facebook and Instagram. He specializes in Hondas yeah. and Acuras, but also he has done many, many other cars as well. Evos, you name it. Just hit him up and he got you taken care of. Whether if you're looking for parts, clutches, or any gearing, or even the work completely. He said he's gonna link them with powder coating and sandblasting and stuff too. So if you're looking to get that done too, all in one shot, mine as well. We're gonna crack this open and have a look real quick, see what's going on on the inside. And um, I'll explain like my tear down process. I'll give you that much. That's where your mischief is coming from. Three, four, one, two. All right, this is your three, four shift fork. Has a little wear, so not too bad. If you want to change it, you can. It's not too bad, it can be reused. And also you want to check here for cracks. They're notorious for cracking and breaking right here. Sometimes you get the issue where it's stuck in gear, stuck in either third or fourth gear, is because this piece is broken. And then this is your five, six. Again, slight wear, nothing crazy. So I can reuse these. So I'll say all your forks are good. One, two, three, four, five, six, in good shape. Counter shaft, main shaft. All right, let me show you something real quick. So this is installed incorrectly. Incorrectly or yeah, correctly? Yeah, incorrectly. You see the orientation when I picked it up? Yes. It's like that. So this is your spring washer. This is just a regular flight washer. It goes like this. Spring washer first, flat washer, not reverse. If you do reverse, then this becomes ineffective. All right, this is your impact diff. The bearings feel good. All's a little bit dark. You 
French one looks good. And I check everything else. Those also. lines are normal? Yeah, these lines are normal. That's an indication. They use those to indicate the year. Whether it's 02 to 04, 05, 06, you may see the lines different. This ring is actually speedo drive gear. It makes contact with the speed gear. And that's what actually um, reads the speedometer. Yeah, bearings feel good. They're not, they're not notchy or anything like that. So I changed the input shaft bearing. I changed the input shaft seal as well. I double check these bearings, the top counter shaft bearing, the top main shaft bearing, make sure that they're good. Usually the um, clutch case bearing is good for the counter shaft, but I still pull it out, check it to make sure there's no debris in here. Because debris gets trapped under here as well. So remove everything, clean the case, send it out to get it sandblasted, and then start the rebuild process. Take all the seals out as well. So the counter shaft consists of your first through six. Main shaft is first through six as well. So the gears actually consist of main shaft and counter shaft. So your first gear will be right here. This is your second gear. This is your third gear. This is fourth, fifth, sixth. This is your reverse. The reverse actually makes contact with the idler. So it sits in this position when you're not in reverse and then it engages for reverse right here. Cool. So that's how that works. When I do rebuilds, I tear everything down, clean it, check the gears, make sure there are no cracks on the gears and um, exam examine the wear before I reuse them. So if you want to come in real close here, if you look at the engagement on the gear, it looks good. It's, it's shaped like an arrowhead. That's what you're looking for. The synchro, I could visually inspect it without measuring it and let you know that the synchro is good. What I do is I pull it against the gear like this and check the clearance. You can visually see there's a gap there, so that's good. And the spring is also good as well. The spring isn't, isn't really beat up because sometimes from shifting, the spring would get really beat up and deformed. So this is your first gear position. And the sleeve is moving really good, so that's, that's a plus. It's not too sticky. There's a little, you see those little scratches in there? Yeah. Not bad, that's normal wear. So this is your one, two hub. This is your one, two sleeve. So that's second gear, first gear. So that's sliding really nicely. Second gear looks good too. It's a little bit worn, but not crazy. So what I do is I, I use a Dremel tool and I devour these to clean it up so you can reuse it. So you can actually save the gear. And again, I check the second gear synchro as well. By pushing it up against the gear, check the clearance, it looks good. So I'd say one, two is in great shape. Three, four, five, six. Pass my finger along it like this, feel it, make sure that there are no cracks. But then once I tear everything down, I look at each gear individually. And then I'm gonna put a new bearing up here. And also I check on the one, two sleeve. You may get an impression right here from the reverse gear, because the idler actually slides in here to put you into reverse but sometimes as you can see there's an impression there and an impression here that's just normal wear so this wasn't isn't too bad but when i break this down i'm going to check the inside to make sure that the inside engagement is nice and clean if not then you have to replace this sleeve as well this is the main shaft one two three four five six all right third gear all right so here we go you're having grinding issues in third gear right uh yeah yeah i can tell look at the synchro all right, so this is an OEM synchro, OEM third, fourth synchro. See the shape of it in comparison to that one? Look at that one. Oh, wow. Yeah. Worn out. Big time. So you definitely need a synchro. All right. And you need a hub as well. So this is your 3-4 hub. Look at the inside. So it's cuffed up. So usually once you start wearing your hub and synchro, you tend to wear the sleeve as well. And remember I was telling you about pressing the gear so you can see the clearance? There's no clearance there. See how it's touching the gear? It's just like... Synchro is completely dead. So regardless of what you try to do, whenever you shift, it's not slowing the gear down in time. So you always get a grind every time you shift. Because the purpose of your synchros is like brake pads. They actually make, in, make contact with the um, gear, slows it down, synchronizes the speed so you can shift so you don't get a grind. Science! telling you i've been doing this <laughs> and then the fourth gear is slightly worn as well but it's not as bad as the third so if we check the synchro here see we have some clearance on oh the synchro is bad just seeing it right there that's fifth to six this is fifth gear this is your fifth gear synchro since you need four synchros already just go ahead and do a complete set so if you come here don't expect you know for him to just do your <laughs> stuff on the spot yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. We planned this, so I made an appointment, in other words. So maybe you can make an appointment too, just so you can see your trends. All right, so we start by removing the bearing, I just flip it over. It doesn't always come out this easy. <laughs> <laughs> but this one did, and immediately I can see damage on your main shaft. Oh, is it missing completely? Oh yeah, that's gone. So what would that's, the main shaft do, in other words? That's the second gear. 
This is your input strap. This is actually makes contact with your shoe. So even when looking at the gears, if you're at the track, you take part, uh -huh. you might think it's okay, but. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this strap always turns, but you have a missing tooth. So you may have had noise in there. You didn't hear any noise? So this is your needle bearing like I was telling you about. So the gear actually sits in the needle bearing. Very thin. Yeah, very thin needle bearing. And this is your third gear. So what you want to check on your third gear is check to make sure it's nice and pointed. I, I always tell people like an arrowhead or a rooftop. Right, right. Yeah, and it's not squashed out. So once you're in that good condition and the teeth are still good, you can reuse the gear. This is a bad synchro. This is your third gear synchro. Now you see that impression that you see along the ends? Like a ring? Yeah. Okay, what happens is once your synchro get excessively worn and then once it makes contact like that, it constantly just rubs on it and it creates that impression. So this sinker is completely dead. You can't do anything with this but throw it in the garbage. Dang. Where's the garbage? <laughs> Three, four sleeve and hub. And you see how it's worn? On the inside? Yeah, right here. Let me zoom in a little bit. Oh yeah. This is third. This is where third mates makes contact. The other side is fourth. So hold that thought. I'm gonna show you the difference. And you see how it's sticking? because these areas are worn so badly that it won't slide and this is a good one this is a brand new one now if you look at it you see those pointed teeth sticking out because what you're looking at is this area right here see how it's flat versus here oh yeah mm -hmm. it's like shaved down yeah those are teeth yeah and if you pass your finger over you can actually feel it as well Oh yeah. See the difference? Oh yeah. yeah. So you need a sleeve and hub as well. And I would do your fourth gear. Fourth gear looks good. Fourth gear needle bearing, fourth gear distance collar, fifth gear distance collar. This is your fifth gear. I usually check them for burn marks. Because sometimes they get really scorched from friction and I don't like to reuse them once they're burnt. Right. Synchro is done. So we'll change that. So we're gonna do a complete set of synchros. And this is the fifth, sixth hub. See, look at that. Look how smooth. easy. Smooth. The other one's giving you like a... Yeah, it's, it's nudgy, it sticks. This one's nice and smooth. And again, it's nice and pointed on here, on the inside. It does have some shavings yeah. in there. But at least it slides. See? This one. That's third? Yeah, this is third. Yeah, this is third. See how it's sticky? A mischief. Oh yeah. <laughs> Every single time. Yeah, because it's sticking. Yeah. yeah. Every single time. Because at the track, I tried power shifting it, yeah. and it would not go in at all. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure that it made it even worse. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, because when you try to shift and it sticks right here, you're going to miss shift. So that's basically it. So that's a quick rundown on the transmission. So you need a um, uh, synchro set. We're gonna do a three, four sleeve and hook. Um, the shift arm for the shifter mechanism, the main shaft, replace the bearings. We're gonna replace the main shaft bearing, some people call it input shaft bearing. Replace the seal as well. Counter shaft bearing is in good shape. I'll take that out, double check it. We're gonna change the two bearings at the top, counter shaft bearing and the main shaft bearing that's gonna get changed at the top. And um, clean the case, sandblast the case, and if you wanna paint, powder coat, whatever you decide. Yeah. I want to give a big thank you to Dale yeah, for no helping problem. me out. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for checking out the shop. Yes, and beautiful place. I'm going to leave the links down below. You can check them out on Facebook, Instagram. Great dude. If you're in Florida, he got you. You can come here. If not, he can ship you out stuff. I see boxes there going out yeah, to shipping. Ship around the world, man. Yeah. I've shipped to Europe, South America. You guys need to hit this guy up. So yeah. we're going to come back whenever it's ready. See it all done. And then, uh, yeah, we'll talk about the coating stuff, see how, which way I want it, but that'll be the last of our concern. We're gonna get everything fixed up, head back to the track, some more racing, get the car to go 10s, which is how we want it. Started making more power, so the motor was my main priority, and then, look, the transmission didn't get any attention. Now it is. Uh, I'm grateful. Thank you, Dale. You're good hands, man, like all state. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, so I got something really cool in the mail today. I've been looking into these dash cams for a very, very long time. You already know the purpose of a dash cam is to protect yourself in case of any accident, theft, somebody hitting your car when you're not there. Uh, these things can record at all times and even notify you. This is the battery box. Um, I got it as an add-on for the parking mode. So pretty much I can have a backup just in case I don't drive the car for like a month or so. This will keep everything running. The dash cam, this is 
all you literally need. Hook it up to your cigarette lighter and call it a day. So let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see an install video on the dash cam. I can go over the features and how to install it on your car. Also, I just relaunched my second YouTube channel. Please do me a favor and go ahead and subscribe to that YouTube channel. Click the little bell icon and don't miss the next upload, which is gonna be next week. I'm gonna be posting a lot of behind the scenes stuff and also stuff with the Jeep content. I don't wanna put the Jeep content and that build on this channel. I wanna keep it separate from the stuff that goes on to here. So you can catch more of that build, thousand horsepower, Jeep, on my second YouTube channel. Also, a lot of the behind the scenes stuff and content that doesn't make it onto Four Bangers Production would be on my second YouTube channel. So I'll leave the link down below so you can go ahead and subscribe, click the little bell icon, and then you'll be notified when I launch a new video on that second YouTube channel. So I'm gonna go ahead and start shopping for the parts that I need for the car, figuring out what kind of gear sets do I want for this setup. So stay tuned for that in my next video. Thank you guys for watching. If you're new to this channel, smash that subscribe button, click the little bell icon, and we'll catch you in the next video. See you guys.